One day, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what is it that causes people to enter Al-Jannah more than anything else, the most? And the Prophet ﷺ said, the taqwa of Allah and husnul khuluq. These two things go hand in hand. Without one, you do not have the other. Taqwa of Allah is uh, defined as a person's protecting himself or herself from the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by believing in Allah sincerely and properly, being mindful of Allah, having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is taqwa Allah. And husnul khuluq is having a beautiful character, a beautiful nature, a beautiful way of behaving with all people. And this is exemplified, of course, by our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you have somebody who behaves in a poor manner, when you have someone who is rude to people or two-faced, he is polite to some people and rude to other people. When a person shows Adam al-akhlaq, then you should know that that person also is lacking in taqwa of Allah. And if a person does not have taqwa of Allah, if he is not mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then his or her behavior will be tailored based on the situation, not upon obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it is beneficial for this person to be nice, they are nice. When they see an advantage in being mean or cruel or lying or doing whatever else it is that shows a lack of good akhlaq, a lack of beautiful character, then they will do that because they don't fear Allah. So the two go hand in hand. And if you think about it, the definition which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave to those who are considered hypocrites, four signs. If you see all four of them manifest in one individual, then you should know that that person is a hypocrite. Those four signs all have to do with how that person behaves with other people. The Prophet didn't point out how he is worshipping Allah if his prayers seem to be a lot or a little, these are all signs which are manifest in the way that a person deals with other people. In other words, his, his akhlaq. Does he have beautiful character or not? Does he have husnul khuluq or not? Because husnul khuluq is from the most important things on the Day of Judgment. And so, if he speaks, he lies. If he promises, he breaks his promise. If he is entrusted with a matter, he fails his trust. And if he argues... He insults. This is a warning to all of us. How many of us in this day and age with social media and the kind of anonymity that you have online, how many of us have gotten into an argument with someone online and felt it so easy to revert to insults, insulting a person? But this is from the most unpleasant, undesirable things that a person can have. It indicates a lack of taqwa and Allah is very displeased with it. The Prophet ﷺ said the most disliked, the most hated person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is argumentative and critical, one who argues a lot and criticizes other people. This person has arrogance in their heart. Nobody enters Jannah who has even a small amount of arrogance or kibr in their heart. And one day the Prophet ﷺ, he asked his companions, he asked them, do you know who is Al-Muflis? He said to the companions. The word muflis means somebody who's totally broke, completely poor. And their answer was, well, maybe he's the one without any money. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no. Al-muflis is the one who comes to Allah on the day of judgment with siyam and salawat and obedience to Allah. Ibadat kathira, a lot of ibadat. But he insulted this one and he took the rights of that one. He hurt this one and he hurt that one. And so in compensation from his good deeds are taken for those people whom he made dhulm against until there, is no, there are no more good deeds left for him and then he is thrown in the hellfire. That is the loser. So guard yourselves, my brothers and sisters, in the way that you interact and behave with people. Because our worship of Allah, our salah, 
prohibits us from doing things which are displeasing to Allah. And so the question becomes, if your worship of Allah does not prevent you from behaving in these ways which are displeasing to Allah, then have you really worshipped Allah? The fact of the matter is that this deen of ours is not just a deen of ibadat. It's not just a deen of worshipping Allah and then that's it. No. It's also a deen of mu'amalat. And if you don't show good behavior, then what are your ibadat worth? The Prophet ﷺ said, this deen is mu'amala, the way you interact with people. Some people take that in the wrong way. They say, oh yeah, I don't pray, I don't fast. But, you know, adinu mu'amala, that's not the meaning of the, of the phrase. Adinu mu'amala means that the essence of the deen, the heart of the matter, if your deen does not cause you to behave in the best way, with other people, then your deen is lacking. Your deen is missing the most important and essential thing. An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, the believer, he believes in Allah, reaches to the level, the same level as one who is always fasting and always standing in prayer just by the beautiful character that he exhibits, the way he deals with people, the way he interacts with other people. Just by that alone, he reaches the level of the one who is always fasting and always standing in prayer. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, The most beloved, from the most beloved, from among the most beloved of you to me, and from among the closest of you to me in position on the day of judgment are those whose akhlaq is beautiful, the way they behave with people, the truth and the honesty, the sincerity to people, helping other people. The best of people are those who benefit other people. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, I am a guarantor. I guarantee a house in the highest part of Jannah for the one whose akhlaq is beautiful. And so we hear the story from the ahadith of these two women. One of them, her worshipping of Allah was a lot of worshipping of Allah. She was well known for reading and worshipping and fasting and praying and doing all her ibadat. But her neighbors were afraid of her because she was nasty, she was critical, she was judgmental. And so the Prophet Sallallahu this one said, this one will enter the nar because of her behavior towards other people. And then the other woman he was told about whose prayers and fasting were just average. She did that which is required of her by the deen, but no more, no less. But her neighbors loved her because she was kind and generous and helpful, always good-natured. And you remember, you know, to smile in the face of someone is a charity. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, she will enter Jannah because of the way that she treats people. And as we know, the Prophet ﷺ is the very best example for us to follow in the matter of akhlaq. Allah says, there truly is in the Messenger of Allah, a beautiful example for you, for those who want Allah, who desire Allah in the Day of Judgment, and who remember Allah much. And he said to his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi And so in order for us to imbibe this Husnul Khuluq, and in order for us to teach our children most importantly, we should not only teach them the Qur'an, and the ahadith, but we should actually be teaching them and teaching ourselves the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. His life, what he did in his life, how he behaved in his life, because these are the most best examples of human nature, are they not? So when a Jew came to the Prophet ﷺ and he grabbed him by the collar and he said, Ya Muhammad, pay me back what you owe me. And the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they wanted to kill the man. And the Prophet said, leave, them, leave him alone. Be gentle with him. Advise him to be patient. And advise me to pay my debts. So he told the man, sit with me. I don't have it right now, but stay with me. And then when the companions came back for Salat al-Fajr, all of a sudden here they, they found the Prophet ﷺ still sitting with this man like a guest. He treats him like a guest. He's still sitting with this man at Salat al-Fajr. And then the man stands and he says, he explains that he did not come for the purpose that he stated. He did not come at all for the money that he was owed to him, but he came in order to see if the description of the Prophet 
sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he found in his book the Torah was true his gentleness and his his good nature his politeness his dignity his dignity this man who was dignified in death as he was in life always dignified and he found it to be true and so he said ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the woman who made it a habit to try to throw her garbage on the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how many of us would go to this person and be kind to them we would take offense our egos would have been shattered right why would we ever go to such a person and be nice to them i'm dignified i'm i'm defending myself but the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he went to her when he heard that she was sick because the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his akhlaq he was not thinking about his hurt or his nature he was not focusing on the person that was treating him poorly the way we do we focus on that person someone comes to us they're rude to us all we want to you know defend ourselves no he was thinking of something much higher his mission that he had to accomplish that's why he was setting his feelings aside and he was thinking about his mission that he had to accomplish and guess what brothers and sisters many of us don't realize this we don't stop and think about this but we are responsible as believers as followers of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to carry on that mission every time someone sees you and they know that you're a muslim you are either giving a good impression of islam or a bad impression of islam and how many times have we seen muslims in public behaving in a way that makes islam look very bad so beware we are responsible to carry on this mission and one time the bedouin who came into the masjid of the prophet and he knelt down and he started urinating and the companions wanted to throw him out yes but what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do he understood because he was very good at understanding human nature that this is what the man understood this was his level of thinking he wasn't doing it in order to offend he was doing it because that's all that he knew and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them leave him alone and when he finished told them pour water on the spot and then he went to the man and he explained to him this is something you don't do in the masjid and the man was delighted by his gentleness and this bedouin man made a dua to allah oh allah have mercy on me and muhammad and no one else and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam laughed he understood the nature of the person that he was dealing with he didn't just react and so we as muslims in a society where there are non-muslims we have to understand that there are three kinds of characters that we will encounter in this world from among the non-believers there are those who are good-natured and their hearts are open and when they encounter you as a muslim they're open to you and they want to know things about islam and they're very kind and good people these are the best people then there are people who are the enemies of islam no matter what you do no matter what you tell them they're bigoted and they're hateful or they have a political agenda against islam <coughs> they're supporters of of the enemies of islam and so no matter what you do to this person they will never change their nature but there is a third kind of person and this is the majority of the people people who may have a negative idea of islam based on the things that they've heard the lies that they've been told but they are good-natured people and they want to know the truth and they don't want to they don't want to hate anyone anyway so as soon as you show them how the behavior of a muslim you plant a seed you make an impression you never know that later on they may remember that and go further in their understanding of islam or see if someone is depressed someone looks down ask them a question in public ask them a question are you okay try to be helpful to people yes these are the people that we need to understand their frame of mind and akhlaq shows in a person's face there was a companion of the prophet who before he entered islam he traveled from a distance from another tribe to see this man who was claiming to be a messenger of allah and as soon as he saw the prophet's face he said this is not the face of a liar and he entered islam just based on his face and so the goodness that is inside of you shows a beautiful akhlaq it will show on the outside and people will see it people will be attracted to it nowadays 
you know, we tend to fight with each other, have an argument or have a misunderstanding, and we go our separate ways. How many times has someone insulted you and then had the, the dignity and the fear of Allah enough to come back to you and say, oh brother, I'm sorry, I apologize, I was wrong. How many times have you had an argument with someone and perhaps insulted them, or perhaps were rude, crossed over the bounds with them, and then had the, enough fear of Allah that you could, would come back to that person, even though they hurt you, even though they upset you, and to say to them, oh brother, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Because these days we're all busy defending our egos, yes? But that's not the way a believer should be. So look at the example of Abu Dhar and Bilal. One day Abu Dhar and Bilal had an argument, they had a disagreement, as Muslims sometimes do. And the disagreement became so heated that Abu Dhar fell into saying something that he should never say. He insulted Bilal and Bilal's mother based on their race. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he heard this, he said to Abu Dhar, you are a man in whom there is still some ignorance. And when Abu Dhar realized his mistake, fearing Allah. He didn't just say, okay, maybe I was wrong. He didn't say, oh, please forgive me, I was wrong. No, he put his head on the ground and he said to Bilal, wallahi, I will not lift my head from the ground until you put your foot on top of it, showing that you are superior to me because of my lousy behavior. And finally, the story of Abu Bakr Siddiq. One day, a man from Quraysh, an idol worshiper, was insulting Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And Abu Bakr was standing for a period of time not saying anything. He was having sabr. And every time he looked over at the Prophet Wasallam, the Prophet was smiling. This is very strange, right? Your best friend. Someone's insulting you and your best friend is smiling like he's enjoying it. And then when Abu Bakr lost his patience, as we all do, we're human beings, and he hurled one insult back at the man, then he looked at the Prophet Wasallam and he saw that he was frowning. So when the man had left, Abu Bakr asked his best friend, Ya Rasulullah, I don't understand. When this man was insulting me, you were smiling. When I defended myself, as we all do, then you were frowning. And the Prophet ﷺ explained it to him. He said, when you were quiet, when you were silent, when you had sabr, there was an angel behind you, defending you. Everything that he said about you, the angel defended you. And when you behaved like him, when you hurled an insult back at him, the angel left and the shaitan. وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةُ كَأَنُّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٌ أَقُولُ قَوْلِي هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ مِنْ سَائِرِ الذُّنُوبِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ